Gary Vaynerchuk, great to finally meet you, man. Me too, man. Thank you so much. Yeah, I've been seeing you blowing up all over the internet, man. A lot of videos. I know uh, my website, addictedtosuccess.com. Uh, you've got very big fans on there too. Thank you. So. Hey, everyone. That's awesome. Yeah, man. Um, first and foremost, I actually just want to say thanks because um, you probably don't know it, but you play, played a pretty big, pivotal part in my inspiration to my success, actually. Thank you. In following my passion and profiting from it. It's funny because about five months ago, I actually uh, walked in and told my pain in the ass boss, I can't work here anymore. It's costing me too much and uh, I'm not coming back. So <laughs> thank you, man. Thank you. You inspired well, me a lot. <laughs> I, I appreciate it, man. Good luck to you. It's thank awesome. You, thank you. So you've done very well with your wine business. Yes. Your family wine business. Yes. You've actually built it up to 60 million. Is yep. It? Yep. What would you say that uh, has been the biggest aha moment in your life coming, when it comes from business? You know, what's some of the kind of there's, way there's a lot of things. You know, it's never for me. It's never been one thing. Um, but the thing that really stands out to me is there's no shortcuts. You know, um, I think that people think that you can just get there. Excuse me, that there's some sort of quick move, you know, there's some algorithm, there's some, you know, things you can do that are just gonna get there and just, there's just no shortcuts. For me, the biggest aha moment has been the last 20 years of my career. I mean, we're now here at VaynerMedia and you can see it's a pretty big operation. This company's gone from 25 to 280 people in the last two years. Um, it's a lot of growth, but it took 17 years of knowing about business that helped me speed the process up of building this business. It was all the context of building the last wine business from eight to 150 employees, right? It's always, it's the learnings, it's the, you know, it's the gray hairs, mate, you know? <laughs> they matter, right? Like, I was a whiz kid and I'm good and I'm smart and there's plenty of people watching right now at 22, 23 that can figure it out. Yeah. Um, but no matter what, you can get better, you get better and there's no shortcut. So the aha moment is that it doesn't happen overnight, you know? Um, you said that you told your boss I'm out five months ago, but it didn't happen a day before that. You were doing things that got you to that point that allowed you to make that statement. Um, I think people don't realize how much more time it takes than, than they think. Yeah, you're right, for sure, for sure. No shortcuts at all, man. Um, what would you say is the biggest mistake that you see entrepreneurs make nowadays? Lack of patience, it's the reverse of what we just said. I think, first of all, I think there's a huge naivete. There's way too many people think that they can just be a good entrepreneur because it's trendy. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's a lot of fakepreneurs out there. Yep. They're out there. I mean, there's a lot of people who are great students, come from wealthy families, have never hustled in a day in their life. They think just because they're graduating from Yale that they should be a startup entrepreneur like Zucks was from Harvard. And that's not real. On the flip side, you don't have to be wealthy in, uh, either. You know, there's a lot of kids who are like, they, they're immigrants, they think they can do it because there's immigrant stories. I mean, the truth is this, self-awareness, the lack of self-awareness is the biggest issue. Yeah. People want to be something they're not. You know, I'd love to be the quarterback of the New York Jets, you know, <laughs> but it's not gonna happen, it's just not here, right? And so, I think the biggest, thing is that to, without the cliche quotes and here's the real answer. Every entrepreneur has strengths and weaknesses. You know, you can't be great at everything. And so self-awareness matters. And you might be great at things that are not sexy like operations and infrastructure and, and, and profit margin and things that nobody thinks about that I spend a lot of time on. Well, my brother AJ is better at it than I am. And he's been a big factor in the success of this business. I'm great at hunting, getting new business, selling. You know, I think too many people try to do everything and what they need to realize is their strengths and weaknesses yeah. and they need to focus on their strengths. Yeah, so you guys, basically you complement each other. Absolutely, business. and we cross over a lot. Like I can do operations, I can do a lot of things AJ can do, he can do a lot of things that I can do, but it's kind of like this, right? And if we focus on the things that are outside of each other, you have more upside. Yeah, and that's awesome that you can keep it in the family as well, man. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's lucky. You know, I'm, I'm used to family businesses with my dad and now with my brother AJ. Um, they're hard, you know, for people that are watching, they're hard. Because um, there's other variables that you don't have with other people. There's a love there that you don't share with other people that make you make decisions not just based on the business. Yeah. You're making decisions with your heart, not just your head. Yeah. And as much as heart, and that's why I have such a great culture, I put in, they're never my brother. And that's just another variable. And so, um, yeah. Yeah. When you first started, you know, you, you went the social media route, you did the video blogging and things like that. You know, you built your business up from three million to 60. When you started to find a little bit of, say, fame and a little yes. bit of success, yeah. 
Did you, was your definition of success different to how it actually is now? Yeah, I think it's always about, you know, changed. I mean, what's interesting is it, my real story is digital and other traditional media, I built up the business already. Like a lot of people think that Wine Library TV and Twitter took it from three to 60. It was a part of it, but it was already growing. So I was already successful when that happened. Then that amplified it and took it even further. Then I started becoming internet famous. You know. Pure business-wise, I want to buy the New York Jets, right? Multi-billion dollar ambition. So success has always been predicated on how close am I to doing that. The flip side is, that's just the black and white. The gray, the real stuff, the emotional stuff is, how many jobs am I creating? How many relationships am I making? Am I having more fun, less fun? You know, I love the fact that people know who I, I mean, I, I love the notoriety, I don't mind it. I, I live for the famous fun. I'm not embarrassed to say, you know, some people are like, oh, I like it. I like it. I mean, first of all, it works for me because I like people. And so anything that creates a, uh, takes away a barrier of meeting new people is awesome for me. Me being recognized and asked to take pictures eliminates the barrier of me meeting that person. So there's a lot of reasons why I like it. I like the leverage that it gives me to make business happen. Um, They're all the real things. I'm not scared to say them. Um, Defining success, I don't know, it's interesting. You know, I'm sitting here, I would tell you it hasn't changed that much, here's why. My true definition of success is doing what you want to be doing at all times. Yeah, living life on your own terms, basically. It's very cliche. But it's a truth, no matter what you are, a businessman, an entrepreneur, uh, uh, a, a, an artist, doing what you want to do and being in full charge of that to the best of your ability, outside of outside forces, outside of putting food on your table, like outside the core little things, that's success. And I've had that for a very long time. Um, so it hasn't changed that much. But I think for the people that read Crush It or my other books, decided to start something on the side and they could go screw off to their boss and do their thing. Mm-hmm. Boy, is that some sort of, fe- I mean, imagine, how, I mean, I can't, I'm asking you now, I'm flipping the switch here. Yeah. You must have felt insane that next week. Oh, it's awesome, man. I've been <laughs> able to actually travel the world. I've, you know, lived a bit more of my life, like something that you, a lot of people do once they retire and they're too old to freaking walk around Italy or India or wherever you want to go. You and have very different experiences, right? I mean, like when you're doing those things in your 20s, 30s, and 40s, sometimes you're doing it not married yet, you know, which is more rare in your 60s and 70s, not with other responsibilities, no children and grandchildren. I mean, think about all the people that retire at 65, they want to go live their life. I just heard of a story from a friend. Parents worked their ass off, 65, they went, they're gonna spend three months in Europe and one of their grandchildren's sick and they're coming back two days later. Uh, So like at 30, you're less likely, now you have parents and you have siblings, we always have things, life is complicated, but there is no question that you have less, I don't wanna call it baggage, less responsibility slash the possibility of things happening that take you away from this freedom in your 20s and 30s than you do in your 60s and 70s. Yeah, yeah, you're right, man. Do you know what I like about the way you do things is that you talk about your kids, you talk about your wife as well, you involve your family and teach people that it's more than just what you're doing and just your business. So that's, Thank you. that's great. And, and you know what, I even extend that into friends and acquaintances and people that you just meet. I mean, listen, I got real lucky. The world is becoming very transparent and lots of stuff going on. Look at all the tech. Now we have three cameras here that all cost less than one B big camera 20 years ago, right? Yeah. And a, way a hell of a lot less. Um, the world is becoming much more transparent and the thing that's gonna be valuable is who you are as a human being. Like your personality has become so important. Yeah. This is the right era for me. I genuinely like people. I genuinely like my book trade stuff that's going on as you obviously know. Like. I'm trading my time. Mm. And then all my friends are like, no, 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 make case studies, make standard videos, it scales. And I'm like, yes, I understand it scales, but I don't, then I don't get the experience of meeting more people and them, and it benefits me. Like, you know, very quickly, look, no matter how good of a job I do storytelling out there about who I am, everybody still as a human being has a .01%. Even if they love me completely, they have a .01% of cynicism. Like, are we gonna get there and is Gary gonna be like he is on camera, is he really like that, right? And like to me, that's where I really win was when they come in, they see how happy the atmosphere is, they spend time with me, they see how, <laughs> how, how like lightweight I am, I don't need anything, there's no, there's no like you can't ask me this, you can ask, right? Like we just said, like let's go, right? Th- then you guys walk out of here and be like, he's pretty much like, cool dude. And, that, yeah. and that to me is more valuable than the scale because that's emotional. 
Yeah. Tugs at the heartstrings. Absolutely. It's real, isn't it? It's real. It's like you're going to be at a conference and you're going to be like, oh, Gary Vee, does he really do that? And you'll be like, well, let me tell you my story. You can't scale that any other way. Yeah. So to me, it is scale. It's the scale of, of delivering on your reputation. Yeah, yeah, that's all right. What do you think you would be doing if the internet didn't exist? Someone pulled the cord. I'd be, I'd be selling something and telling stories. Nothing different. I mean, I was doing it before the internet existed. I thought I was going to own 700 liquor stores. <laughs> right? I mean, I, that's an easy question for me yeah. because I was thinking that way and doing that way. Yeah. I mean, I started working my family business before the internet came out. Yeah. yeah. And so I know exactly what I'd be doing. I'd be building bricks and mortars businesses, you know? Yeah. I'd have stores. Yeah. I'd be a merchant. Yeah. That's good. That's good. A real businessman. <laughs> Always. You know, like selling lemonade and going to garage sales and shoveling people's snow and raking leaves and mowing lawns and selling lemonade and baseball cards and I've never known anything else. Hustler. Ever. Ever. A true hustler right here. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Um, what would your advice be for somebody that's looking at going online and starting either a business or their own you know, blog or website? Let me tell you what not to do. Don't chase the money. Too many people that are watching this right now are gonna do homework and read things that say, well, find industries that pay well and pay for click. Uh, you know, and they start building websites about cancer because cancer terms are worth $100 a click. Or, or you know, cancer's a little extreme. Or they're selling the hot thing right now, silly bands that make bracelets. Or they're chasing the dollar. They're chasing the moment instead of chasing what they're about. So I would say, before you start any internet business, take a look in the mirror, a real hard look and say, what am I good at? Self-awareness, remember? Yeah. What am I good at? Like, what am I good at? What stories can I tell? What have I done in my life? A lot of people don't know. So then ask the 10 people around you. Like, go and ask 10 people that are close to you and 10 people that you know a little bit, you went to high school with. You, you, I mean, it was, here's a good example. When I started getting internet famous, all my friends from high school that showed up on my Facebook wall, they were all like, oh, we always knew. And I was like, really? Because I didn't ask them those questions, right? Like, like, it makes sense, and like, so I think what you need to do is audit. You need to audit yourself with yourself and be honest. You need to audit yourself with 10 to 15 people that are closest to you and say, what do I bring to you? Like, am I funny? Am I reliable? What do I always talk about? Oh, you, 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 oh, you trust my opinion in movies? Hmm, you know? And then you need to ask 10 people that are kind of around you. You worked with them once. You've talked to them a bunch on Twitter. You can just tweet on Facebook and ask people what they think you bring in value. And then you start using that data and saying, okay, I need to be a movie reviewer like online, I'll sort of podcast reviewing movies, um, things like that. Yeah, okay, okay, nice, good advice, man. One that I think not too many people take. Yeah, that's very true, yeah, for sure. What would you say is the next biggest platform that's, that's coming out? The things I'm paying attention to are Medium, Snapchat, Vine, and Winelo. W-A-N-E-L-O, uh, which is like a mobile Pinterest-y type thing. Those are the four sites that I'm most focused on right now. Why Snapchat? I think Snapchat's gonna open up their platform okay. and won't be one-to-one. -one. Yep. And I think brands and businesses can send a snap to 10,000 people that are following them and that when they open it for those 10 seconds, they're actually paying attention. Yeah, yep. And so what if the snap said, take a picture, a screenshot of this and scan it to register for 10% off? I think people will do things like that. Yeah. Or yeah. take a Snapchat of this and tweet it at me and I'll give you my ebook for free. Now you've got people putting out tweets to their community with you on it. Yeah. Got it? So right. I think there's a lot of gamification that can happen with Snapchat. You know why? Because Snapchat forces you to pay attention. Yeah. Email, Facebook, Twitter, we think we can get back to it. They'll re-email me. I'll see it again in my stream. Snapchat, you know that once you look at it, it disappears forever. Yep. which requires you to actually pay attention. Scarcity. Yep. And so what, we are all in the business of attention. Everybody worries about the top line. How many visitors do you have? Email, followers. That doesn't matter. It matters. Top line matters. But conversion is what matters. Mm. And Snapchat focuses on conversion, in my opinion. Yeah. And the good thing about that as well is that it actually forces people to deliver quality as well because they've only got the 10 seconds there. So. Well, quality is subjective. Yeah, yeah. Right? Like some people think quality is, you know, limited by time. I don't think that. I think quality is limited by your interest. I think a quality, here's what I think is quality time for four hours. Every Sunday to watch the Jets. 
There's a lot of people that don't. A lot of people think watching TV for 10 hours is quality time. I don't. A lot of people feel like you know, spending an hour writing an algorithm that scales is quality. Some people think spending 15 minutes with some new friends is quality. Everybody has a different definition. Some think the Kardashians are quality TV. Other think it's ruined the world. Some people think that Richard Branson and Tony Robbins are quality. Other people don't. So quality subjective. It's art. You like listening to certain music? I think quality is foie gras and sea urchin. You may not. Quality is subjective. What's not subjective is how it makes one feel. And so the customer's always right. Um, but the effort is required. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And that's something to definitely take into mind. Definitely. Awesome. Good. Um, one last question. Please. Um, I've just recently got engaged to my fiance. Congratulations, my friend. Thank you, man. Thank you. And she really loves Moscato. So okay. Moscato. <laughs> I love so, it. I um, want to get a few brownie points here, man. Yeah. Um, yeah, I want your advice on what do you think is the best sweet Moscato one? So there's a bunch that I'm very fond of. I think the place for you to realize, this is a great question. So first of all, <laughs> Australia makes some good ones. Yeah. Does she like Late Harvest Semillon? Uh, first of all, you should get her on that. Yeah. So That's Late nice. Harvest Semillon from the Hunter Valley. Hunter Valley, oh yeah, yep. Um, but Late Harvest which means it's sweeter. Yeah. Um, and then Moscato in general, I think if you focus on the Alsace, Alsatian wines, um, if you go to Alsace uh, and Austria, that's where you can get some great ones. Yep. Awesome, man. Good, Thank mate. you for your advice. Thank you, everybody. Awesome. Wish you well.